Uh, I know it's a lot of rains these days. It's a rainy season. And I'm, regardless, I hope that's not preventing you from being able to go about your daily business and, you know, achieve your dreams in this beautiful country of ours. Speaking of beautiful country, Nigeria is abound with a lot of opportunities. And, of course, you would agree that it's an amazing place. But some people will not agree. Hence, the very popular um colloquial language in nigeria japa i'm sure you're very familiar with that word right yes a lot of people believe that they don't have enough opportunities in this country and so they have to leave the country so i mean um how, how do they put it now greener pastures yeah that's the word i mean nigeria has a lot of green and pasture as well so you have to know where to search and of course if you want to leave the country what do you need passports Yes, you do need passwords to leave the country, which is what we'll be talking about today on The Medley Show. My name is Tochi and you're welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope that you stick to the next one hour where we'll bring you premium information on all you need to know about having a passport and all the processes you need to go through to get one. But before we get into all that, let's um, get you into the mood with something very funny. Watch this and I'll be right back. If you come out at 3 a.m. and you shout delusion, I will appear. Why? This is my international passport. I collected it two years ago. When I got to the immigration office, the man said, ah, welcome home. How many pages do you need? I said, I want 70 pages. He said, ah, we only have 30 pages available. I said, no, I'll wait for 70 pages. He said, ah, you used to travel like that? I said, yes, ah, I don't want to travel now and then page will not finish. They will not be looking for where they will stamp. I want my passport to be thick so that as I'm traveling here and there, it will not quickly finish. She said, okay. Now, this is the result of the passport. I collected this passport two years ago. Please ask me where I've gone. Ibadan, and some water. I said, when you shout delusion, is me. <laughs> because tell me why I collected 70 pages. Ibo ni Jeremy lo, where am I going to? Look at, look at passports. Keep pa passport, someone passport should be clean like this. No single stamping. That's me. The only time this passport used to see light of day when I'm going to bank and even bank they don't ask me for passport. I shade you look at me. Look at my passport. Look at me. I'm still in legal states. Once in a while, that immigration woman will not test me. Ah, you have not left this country. Excuse me, what's your business? Did I not pay you for the passport? Which one is the one that you are monitoring me? I don't coco no, maybe you are one of the people that don't allow me go. Rubbish. Is this I want to use my life. <laughs> I see how I be asked me. I don't know who asked you to collect 70 pages, so you shall wear to collect 70 pages by yourself. Are you paid with your money? So, if you have not traveled, I don't know who answered that question for you. Anyway, if you're just joining us, this is the Medley Show. And my name is Tochi. Thank you so much for still being here with us. Today, we are talking the passport process. And that kit was just to help you understand that as important as the passport is, some people have still not used it. Sha. You understand. So it's not just about going to get the passport. You need to have use for it as well. Okay, I do promise you that we're going to have a very interesting guest on the show. So, you know, do justice to the topic of conversation today. And I'm talking of none other than David Paradang. He's a retired controller at the Comptroller at the Nigeria Immigration Service. Comptroller General. Comptroller General. Oh, right. You're the retired Comptroller General of, of the Nigeria Immigration Service. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to start with asking. You have a passport, right? You, have, you do have a passport. Of course you should have a passport. I do have a passport. Why did you get I a passport? Passports. Yeah, how, why did you get a passport? It's very interesting, Tochi. Yeah. Uh, why did I get a passport? Yeah, hmm. because I mean, how else told us her own reason? I, part of my travels, official uh, business is to travel. And obviously, I would need a passport yeah. to travel. A lot of transactions are done showing identity. And I need a passport to identify myself in such transactions. So it's absolutely necessary for people that do require such facilities to obtain a Nigerian passport. It's absolutely necessary. Okay, so yours is majorly official. 
So your job does, I mean, you can't be giving other people passports and not have one yourself. Are there are many immigration officers that don't have passports. For real? Yes. Oh, you course. guys should make it a requirement. I mean, if you're an immigration officer, you should have a passport. When you don't need it, you can't you give don't what have you don't have. It. Oh, yeah, so there are people who do not need passports. Definitely, there are people who don't need passports. Because I was going to ask um, does every Nigerian citizen necessarily have to have a passport? It's not a requirement for being a Nigerian citizen. You may apply for a passport and as of now there are hundreds and thousands of passports that have been issued but people are not collecting them so you find out that it's not actually a need they just thought it would be good to have a passport that let me have a passport let me have a passport let me have a passport but they don't use it for anything so you don't have to have a passport if you don't need it so if you're not traveling which is basically the major thing people need passports for. If you're not traveling, you don't necessarily have to go and apply and get an international passport. Uh, sometimes they require you to identify yourself with a passport, a driving license, national ID card, yeah. and things like that. So you may not travel, but you may need to identify yourself, so you will need a passport in that instance. Okay. So um, one of the things I've heard a lot is people having a lot of stress going to get a passport. I mean, you could go to the immigration office and spend an entire day. I've also seen people who have spent like more than a month and they've still not gotten their passports. So I'm going to ask you this. Um, walk me through the step-to-step -step process of acquiring a Nigerian passport. Hey, before I go to walk, through, uh, walk you through the stages, yeah. it will be good for me to tell you that uh, very few instances in very, very few instances do people have to go through stress before. And it's, part of it is you need to know the process and there's a lot of information by the Nigeria Immigration Service on their website on the procedure to go to okay. get a passport. But some people just say, I want a passport today. They walk to the passport office without reading what the procedure is all about. So it's something that, uh, is self-inflicted, if I may say, <laughs> uh, but there are a few instances of people that have been there, they went through the process, but they have issues. Maybe as we go through the program, I'll be able to explain some of the issues that may arise that will cause you to get a delay in okay. getting your passport issued. So you're saying that if they know the procedure, yes. they would most, um, most probably not encounter the ch some of the challenges that they do encounter when they get to go to get the, pro the passports. Absolutely. It will simplify a lot of things for people. And going back to the procedure. Uh -huh, because I was going to say you're here to help us simplify it for them. <laughs> yes. So please. Going back to the procedure, the Nigeria Immigration Service has a website for passports okay. that you are supposed to read. And the procedure is that you go through the website if you want to apply, there are a lot of facilities that the service offers, passport, okay. visas, and all sorts of things there for non-Nigerians. If you want to apply for a passport, you click there. It tells you, you fill out the form there. You pay online. You pay online. Some people feel that they have to go there themselves and meet somebody. It's a Nigerian cultural issue that uh, is difficult to... <laughs> <laughs> but you can pay online. Is it sincerely. really a Nigerian cultural issue? It is. With my experience in the immigration service, I could tell you what someone has told me before. Yes. Okay. So um, someone did tell me that you want to pay online. Oh, yeah. Go and pay online and follow the process online. Let me see when you get your passport. But when you get to the office and you're able to find someone to do it manually, it seems to make the process faster. So if you refer people online, it's very possible that some people have tried the online process. And when it wasn't yielding the required result, they resorted to the faster means. Equally, equally, there are quite a number of people that have tried online and they have gotten it as easy as anything. But some people assume that if you don't meet anybody, mm. you will not get it done. But several people, and most especially people that, they, this new generation of people, they, they believe in doing things online and they get it done online without having to go through anybody. Sincerely, I think it's a cultural issue. Mm. A Nigerian believes that I can't get anything from you 
till I get somebody who knows you and talks to you. <laughs> but I have never met you, Tochi. <laughs> and you are interviewing me today. Okay. So it's, uh, you can see that uh, maybe the cultural barriers have been broken gradually. Okay. So is there really Nigerians that think that way or is the process that has taught them that? Anyway, let me leave that because that's not the concentration. But regardless of... Um, you saying people have to go to the website, find out what they should do yeah. before. We still cannot deny the fact that passport processing has posed a lot of challenges to so many applicants. We cannot deny that. Um, a lot of times you go to the immigration office, you see the crowd could be very scary sometimes. So what is the immigration service doing to help make it a lot easier? So let me walk you through the process that could make it a lot easier. Okay. And uh, the Immigration Service has put in considerable effort to try to make it easier for people, which I'll walk you. The procedure, as I told you earlier, is mm -hmm. to go on the website, fill, download the form, fill it up, pay online. Am I filling it online or I have to download no, the manual copy? On, you fill it online. Okay. Uh, you, you see that they will ask for an appointment for you. Right. And that appointment is to make it easier for you to not just go and queue up endlessly. Okay. You see that the appointment dates have considerably been reducing gradually, gradually, gradually. It used to be months, but now maximum of one week, 10 days. Really? I'm telling you with all emphasis. And that's what I'm telling I'm you. I'm sorry. Sorry, sir. You don't um, want to believe Mr. me. David, you're going to have to say that again. Okay. Did you say one week to 10 days? Exactly. I'm finding it hard to believe. And I'm sure some well, other people who are Well, maybe you applied know. a month ago. <laughs> or maybe you applied 10, uh, 10 weeks ago. Okay. But as at now, we, the immigration service has been aggressively okay. open front end offices. Okay. In different parts of the country. In some parts of the country. There are more than four passport offices. But people say that, except I get a passport from Abuja, except right. I get the passport I know from trend. Lagos, I know the, that, that trend, passport yeah. is not genuine. Authentic, yeah. Get your passport from Abeokuta, get your passport from Damaturu, get your passport from Berninkebi. It's the same Nigerian passport, the same security features. It's the same. So, why? People, you don't have to come and load it. Mm. on Lagos, load in Abuja. So you find out that if you want to get it in Abuja, by all means, people leave, uh, uh, let's say, leave, let's, let's say, let's say, they leave Inugu, mm. for instance, or they leave um, Kwara, for instance, and want to come to Abuja. Absolutely unnecessary. So you find out that you choke up the system there. And in some, in some of those areas, it's working. Um, I do agree. I was going to ask that, but... Couldn't that also be that there are, there's a larger volume of people in these two cities that want passport more than the places like Abiyokuta and all that, that you've mentioned? That could also be what is leading to the large numbers. Not I know that there are people who even do not want to get passports in the office um, in the immigration office in Guagualada mm. because that will bear FCT, then this one will bear Abuja. So I know there are people who have those concerns. So, but could it also be that there's a larger number? in these cities than the places you've mentioned? Well, let me just tell you that, not really, but uh, from our own experience and interview with people that come for such passports, they will tell you that uh, if they see my passport is issued in Abuja, yeah. I will get a visa easier. Oh. So it is a misconception, total misconception. Total misconception. So it really, it is, let's say, uh, ignorance that would cause them to go through that. But if the facilities provided, the centers provided are okay. so many that people should pick what's nearest to them. Government wants to make it convenient for everybody to get a passport in okay. those areas. So it's good for them to take advantage of such. Okay, Mr. David, we're going to get back to that conversation. But before we do that, um, we did go to the streets to find out how knowledgeable people are about passports and its relevance. And this is what they had to say. Watch this. Uh, passport is a means of identification. A oh, passport is a form of identity for an, an individual. It could be for ordinary purposes, official purposes, or otherwise, travel purposes and all. 
because I can't list out all the purposes, but it has a vast purpose, is what I know. Passport essentially, I think, is just a means of identification. Essentially, passport is simply that document you need to identify yourself as a citizen of a particular country. So you need it to travel. A passport is a means of identification that uh, will make people to know more about you and it will enable you to carry out uh, transactions in various places say banking organization passport is means of identification and is very important particularly in any official responsibility. Depending on the angle you are asking, if you ask an ordinary lemma, what is a passport, they may tell the passport they use a photograph passport. Uh, and uh, I think maybe if you go further, that is a, a passport that maybe has to do with the international passport. A passport is like an ID card that automatically allows you to travel um, around the world, outside Nigeria, yes. Of, as of now, no, but I intend to get one. Yeah, I do. I just renewed it, I think, well, last year. I don't. <laughs> We're planning to have one, though. Yeah, I do. I do. I have. Yes, of course. I even, what, whatever, anywhere I'm going, I keep it in my wallet. In case of any emergency, I can just use it. international passports it means it's an identification that can be recognized internationally I mean outside your country and within your country it will enable you to acquire visa in order to be able to travel out of the shore of this country because if you don't have a passport it's like you don't have a pass you don't have a clearance to travel out maybe for tourism maybe for study maybe for even relocation, staying abroad. Uh, international passport can actually serve uh, more than one uh, uh, importance to people. Uh, first and foremost is a form of identification. And uh, secondly, if you intend to leave the shores of Nigeria, maybe for any reason you want to travel abroad, you need a passport which is going to be issued to you by the Nigerian Immigration Service. It's like uh, a document you use that will carry your identity, your information, every little details about you. And the international passport is one that will help you for travel purposes and other travel purposes. Um, I'm sorry, and other purposes, sorry. And we have other reasons and importance attached to it. It could be for official purposes as well. You to identify yourself as a citizen of this country, not just within the shores of this country. Within the shores of this country, you could make use of your national ID card and everything, but the moment you attempt to step your foot outside of this country, that's like the most important document. Um, something might just come up that we warrant you traveling out and boom, maybe it's, it's something that is, that, that is probably a surprise and and it has to be that moment and before you know okay yes mom will come travel to this place and you're like oh they have a passport oh my god it has missed you <laughs> so you know it's crazy sometimes that's why it's really important to have a passport for in case of insensitivity which with this passport it gave me access to many places that i want to enter for instance like an international passport i cannot have access to any other country i have to use the international passport to secure a visa that will guarantee me to the next destination. You having an international passport is as good as you having a, a document that can lead you to an international country. A document that can lead you, can fly you out of the country because without this, I don't think you can even leave from here to Ghana that is very close to, except if you are going maybe by illegal way or as to which uh, where there are a lot of where, a lot of us, maybe some of our brothers, you see them dying on the road on trying to go outside the country because they don't have these international passports. 
Welcome back to the Medley Show. If you just joined us, you're not so late. Today we're talking the passport process and I'm in the studio with the former, the retired controller general of Immigration Service, David Paradang. And we're still working you through the processes of getting the passport. That was uh, Voices from the Streets, their knowledge of the passports. Do know that you can join the conversation in the studio by sending messages to either WhatsApp or text. No calls, please, to 0811 778 The number should be on the screen. So please... Um, send your messages, let us know what you think. If you have questions, I'm sure Mr. David Paradon will be here to take those questions. So I was going to ask this. Uh, um, what are the features that authenticates a passport? Because we know that passport fraud is a thing even in Nigeria and across the world. So how do you identify what are the features of an authentic passport? Uh, thank you very much. The Nigerian passport has evolved tremendously over the years. Yeah. Before now, if you have your grandparents, I'm sure, they may have the passports issued by the colonial government. Okay. They were handwritten like that on a piece of paper. Gradually, it evolved to machine-readable passports. They were right, okay, but it cannot be read by any machine. Then we graduated to electronic passports. Okay. Uh, and those ones, you will see some parts already. Uh, printed, but there are still features that are there in the microchip you can, that is embedded in the passport. You read through, if you put it through a machine, it will show your date of birth, it will show your picture, your it will show details. Your, your details, your thumbprints and everything, all the fingers. Then we graduated to the enhanced e-passport. This is a very advanced form that has been uh, developed and recommended by the International Civil Aviation Authority, ICAO, to, uh, for the new generation of passports. This is an extremely difficult to crack, to forge passports. So you'll find out that most informations are embedded in the chip. Makes it difficult to forge. And once uh, you go through it, you'll find that before we were doing only maybe one finger, we graduated to two, to, okay. to four, now to it's ten, ten, to the, the entire okay. ten, which means that it's almost practically impossible for somebody to have the same fingerprint, all ten fingers. And some people used to, uh, let's say, try to outsmart the process by saying, okay, if you put two fingers only, you know, they will take one leg, one, one toe and put the but now it's ten fingers, so you cannot tell us that you you don't have uh, you, are, you don't have an index <laughs> yeah. finger, you don't have the middle finger, you don't have so that you you find absolutely little possibility of, uh, of having beating the system. Issues like uh, that. Yes. Yeah. So the enhanced e-passports is very very almost tamper and foolproof. Besides that, the service has gone a little bit further. Uh, they they used to have like let's say the print on it or the yeah. the is gone now. They used to have let's say they say laminate the passport and what all those kind of things that after some time if you keep it in a very warm atmosphere it will crack, it will open up. Now they have gone into a very higher system of producing passports. Yeah, it makes that extremely difficult. Uh, polycarbonate. Uh, you find out that that one is, you will see it like that. I wish I had brought my passport. Oh, okay. And you you know, have I would have one. shown yeah. one to you. You see that it's difficult for you to tamper with it. It's difficult for you to crack through with it. So you find out the system has gone very, very so advanced. the way it is now, yes. it's very easy to um, separate an authentic passport from a fake. For the ordinary man, you may, may not. not know. You may right. not know. So that's why these machines are authenticated by equipment, by machines. Yeah, you, you go to a passport reader. Yeah. You go to a passport reader, you swipe your passport. If you travel often, you see that that's the procedure that most immigration services use. You take your passport, they swipe it in. Once they swipe it in and it contacts the microchip, it will bring out every information. I may see Tochi on the face of it, or I may see a different person. Or, mm. uh, in those days, in immigration, uh, they used to call something in Hausa, Angulu de Kanzabu. 
Okay. That means uh, you see a vulture with the head of a different. Oh Lord. So you 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 see the passport. Yeah. It's reading Tochi, but, but maybe the, the picture different. you will see Farada. You uh, but this is something that cannot be done with the enhanced e passport. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you find that that's we've gone a long way. Okay, so my, I was going to ask, that my next question, um, someone already sent in a message asking that question, so yeah. I would read it to you. His name is Prince Ifai Eze, and he says, why is international passport renewal outside Nigeria not simple or easy? That was going to be my next question. I wanted to know why, if um, the immigration is doing anything with the embassy to make this process a lot easier for people who are outside the country, because I've also heard... I mean, I live here, but I have family outside the country. I've also heard how difficult they say it is to renew um, your passport. There are some people even go as far as having to come back to do the process because it's quite difficult. Yeah, precisely. You will find out that I mentioned to you earlier that we are, uh, tremendous effort has been made to make the passport offices nearer Nigerian citizens. Hmm. But you will find out that you may be stored in, let's say, Kazakhstan, and your next embassy is maybe in Russia. Right. It's extremely difficult for you. No, you let's even talk about those yeah, in but the I'm UK telling, and the yes, US. Um, you may be in Quebec. Yeah? Okay. Uh, for you to get to Ot Ottawa, Ottawa to get a passport, that, yeah. it will be a little bit difficult. So you find out that in itself is the number one problem of making it difficult for them. There are fewer passport offices abroad. Even in all embassies all over the world, not all embassies have passport issuing machines as are today. That in itself is a number one problem. Why is that though? The immigration service has made tremendous effort to get government to make it easier for people. And over time, we find out that the service developed procedures to make it easy for people by what they call passport intervention exercises. We will wait to see that a lot of people apply. Mm. Then they would have to send officers from Nigeria to those countries to go and do the, what they call passport acquisition, get your data, get the payments in, do, and then come over and print them in Nigeria before they send them back to you. Mm. But in some other countries, there are passport offices. But look at the, past, the population of Nigerians in London, right. in the UK. Yes. And they have only one center. Now, another center has been opened in Liverpool, uh, Manchester. So you see, we are making every effort to make it easier, but it's just sheer size in areas that you find out people find it difficult abroad to get their Nigerian passports. And I will come to the technical details a little bit later, mm -hmm. if I can come into it now and I mention to you that. You ask somebody who has been in school in, uh, let's say, Sweden for five years, he didn't know that Nigeria requires you to have a national identity number before you can get a passport. He fills online and asks, when it comes to putting your uh, NIN number, mm. it cannot proceed any further. It goes back to wait for months and months. He thinks that they should have answered me, I've done everything online, why are they taking my time to do this? But these are things. The federal government has made it a requirement for integration of the data of people in Nigeria. Yeah. So you find out the, the national ID card, the passport, the driving license, they are all being integrated. And hopefully they will get more uh, detail to mm. get everybody to, on the same database in Nigeria. It can reduce a lot of things. Uh, you are seeing that uh, people are asking for NIN when they want to register their phone number, SIMs and what have you. These are for the good of everybody. but. An ordinary Nigerian living abroad may not know. And if you want to go and get a national identity number in some countries, there is no center. So one of the major problems is lack of center. But how functional is the one that is even available? Because sometimes it's not just the fact that there isn't enough centers. It's the fact that even the one that is available is not even um, living up to capacity. If overwhelmed, with numbers or if the numbers are not there, you should not have that problem. If, if people are not too many on the system. But you find out uh, equally too that uh, occasionally there are logistic problems. 
very rarely, but occasionally there are logistic problems. Very rarely. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you may say so, logistic problems. Let's say that, okay, the 200 people applied for passports. Yeah. And that center was only issued 100 booklets for passports. That's a logistic problem. Okay. That it will so take it some take a while for, for the them to, to make up the remaining hundred theirs. to come in. Yeah. Okay. So earlier, earlier in the show, I, I did when you talked about um, the process it's being online. I did say that the, maybe the reason why people gather uh, physically at the center is because the online process doesn't really work as much as they say. So here is a question from um, someone. He didn't quite put his name. And his is not even in Abuja or Lagos. So mm -hmm. he says, I captured in Elisha on the 30th of May, mm -hmm. 2023. Until today, 26th of July, I've not received it just because I paid online. And they're saying that um, if you pay online, you'll be treated on, like online. I mean, <laughs> that they said it to his, he said they even said it to his face in their office. Well, this is not that, Lagos that, and this that is, is not Abuja. That uh, is really a rare occurrence and it's really strange for me to hear I don't that. think it's rare. I've, but I've it's really heard, very strange. I've heard of let online me, let me, let me, more. Let me, no, let me put it through. Most people would not check if they had queries on their applications. Let me put you through a supposed example that happens to many people. Mm. You go to the passport office, you fill everything online, your name is Tochi XYZ. Yeah. And I bring up your NIN number. Okay. I will see to G Z Y X. The passport will not be issued. Definitely, there will be a mismatch of the way you put your names, yes. the way you arrange them. Once it is not arranged, it's not the arranged same way. the way the NIN and the application there yeah. will be a problem. So you see, you see people really assume that they did everything right. It's an assumption. They assume that they did everything right, but actually there are issues there. And they have not taken effort to query the system and find out, is there any issue that is the problem? I applied in May, and now it's the end of July. I've not gotten it. Query the system and find out. Maybe you have issues with NIN. Maybe you have issues with um, your... People make mistakes that are not... And they do not even know that they made this mistake. They wouldn't know. Somebody, maybe you feel touchy. Mm. You put Mr. You are meant to put, let's say, put MS, MRS or whatever at the end. You forgot and to put, put the, the S. You didn't put the S. So that becomes when it an comes issue. When common issue, you can find out that it cannot go through. The procedure cannot go through to completion. Okay. So, so we're going to get back to that question because I have <laughs> more to say on that. But uh, before we proceed uh, yes. on the show, uh, before we proceed with um, our conversation with uh, Mr. David Paradang, time now to give you a few tips on how to get a Nigerian passport. Watch this. Passport application guidelines, general procedures for passport application. One, visit the homepage of Nigeria Immigration Portal. Two, locate and click on the appropriate application to start the process. That is, e-passport application or MRP passport application not applicable in all missions. Number three, select a passport type, standard e-passport or official e-passport, then click on start application button. Four, fill the application form, check the I accept full responsibility of the information provided in this form, then click the print button to print filled form. Number five, Click on Submit Application button to view application details. Number six, click on Proceed to Online Payment. Number seven, click to select Payment Currency, Pay in Naira or Pay in Dollars option, then click on Continue button. Number eight, choose the currency you want to use for payment, that is Naira or the US dollars. Number nine, on confirmation of payment, proceed for your interview with relevant documents. Please know that your interview schedule, final e-receipt, and acknowledgement slip are only accessible using your validation number. Number 10. To print your NIS e-receipt, 1. On the portal homepage, click on the Query Your Application Payment Status link. 2. 
At the next page, select Passport as an option under the Application Type drop-down. 3. Enter the following details. Application ID, reference number, validation number if applicable. Number 4. Submit the details. Number 5. Your full application details shall be returned. Number 6. Scroll down the page and click on the print receipts. Number 7. You will be presented with your NIS e receipt in a new window. Number 8. Click on print this receipt to send a copy to the printer. Number 11. To generate your passport guarantors form, 1. Click on passport guarantors form at the home page of the Nigeria Immigration Service. 2. Enter reference and ID number generated on the acknowledgement slip. 3. Click print to print out first page and next to print out second page. You will still be required to click the print button. General documents required for interview. Standard passport. 1. Local government letter of identification. 2. Birth certificate or age declaration. 3. Two recent color passport photographs. 4. Guarantor's form sworn to before a commissioner of oaths, magistrate, or high court judge. 5. Parents' letter of consent for minors under 16 years. 6. Marriage certificate where applicable. 7. Police report in case of lost passport. 8. Submit application with supporting document to passport office, embassy, or high commission. For official passports, you require letter of introduction from appropriate state government, federal government ministry, or organization, two, marriage certificate where applicable, three, police report in case of lost passport, four, letter of appointment or letter of promotion, and five, submit application with supporting document to passport office, embassy, or high commission. Seaman's book requirements 1. Local government letter of identification 2. Birth certificate or age declaration 3. Two current colored passport photographs 4. Submit application with supporting document to passport office, embassy or high commission. The NIS passport fee for applicants in Nigeria are 32 pages, 8,750 for 0 to 17 years, 15,000 for 18 to 59 years, and 60 and above, 8,750. For 64 pages, it is 20,000 all through. For NIS passport fee in all embassies, consulate, or high commission, it is for 32 pages, $65 for 0 to 17 years, $94 for 18 to 59 years, and $65 for 60 and above. For 64 pages, it is $125 all through. Notes. Acknowledgement slip and payment receipt plus two recent photographs are applicable in all cases. Print out copy of duly completed application form. Take printed and signed application forms to passport office, embassy, high commission for further processing. A guarantor's form must attach the following documents. Passport of data page of Nigerian standard passport, driving license, or national identity card. With this, we hope we have been able to assist you when next you want to apply for a Nigerian passport. Welcome back to the Medley Show. So I hope that was very insightful and helpful. For so, so for some of you who have been sending messages asking the process, the prices, I hope the information in that feature was able to answer your question. I'm still in the studio with the former Comptroller General of Immigration Service, David Paradang. And we're still talking about the passport process. Okay, so now I want to ask, um, passport theft or loss of passport? For someone who lives outside the country, assuming I lose my passport, uh, or maybe I was robbed on the street and I, um, my passport is stolen, how is the immigration going to help me get back my passport or be able to still travel stress-free? Uh, before we, we step into the loss of passports, may I quickly just alert uh, 
our viewers that the prices for most passports have been reviewed. And How uh, long ago was that reviewed? Uh, not too long ago. Okay. Not really long so ago. So that explains yeah, that the explains. difference. So okay. I hope nobody would use their uh, price list here and go and uh, accuse immigration for collecting more money than there uh, is. Okay, so maybe you tell us the have reviewed a, price list. They reviewed list. Uh, well or what. Yeah. Okay. The 64 pages goes up to 77,000 naira now. As against what was? I think I saw 20 or something. Yeah. Okay. Which is quite massive. The price differential is quite massive. 77,000? Exactly. And the 32 pages goes for what now? It goes for about 22. Not uh, 15? Not 15, no. Okay. So there have really been uh, a lot of factors that would be attributable, would be maybe currency uh, change in price. So you see, this could also be some of the issues people are having. If yes. the prices were reviewed and yeah. it doesn't reflect on the site, so maybe you it's also going to be an yes, issue they for me. Yes, and then it doesn't get That's what I'm saying. So when precisely, prices, exactly so. So that's also a problem. That's a problem. That's so a if challenge. if you review your prices, let it reflect on your website so that I do not have issues if I'm applying online. Yes, exactly. The, the websites keep upgrading, being upgraded. Uh, periodically and often, actually. Uh, nobody would like not to upgrade the price list anyway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number one place that they would like to upgrade. So, and uh, going further to the issue of uh, loss of passports, the government of Nigeria and the Nigeria Immigration Service tries to bring up, uh, let's say, options for you in case you get your passport lost abroad okay. as you painted. We have what we call the emergency travel certificate that can be issued for you at the nearest Nigerian mission to where you, uh, your passport gets lost. You can use that to come into the country before you start the process of getting your passport replaced after okay. being lost. So you find out that uh, you won't be stranded abroad per se to say you cannot travel again, you have to, the immigration there will pick you and you get incarcerated. You will get an emergency travel certificate for you to come into the country to the embassy. Immediately you get to the embassy, show your police report of loss of passport. They will issue you an emergency travel certificate that will enable you to come back to the country. Loss of passports is a very technical issue. Okay. And uh, the immigration service does not take it lightly because a lot of fraudulent activities can be done with that. So uh, people I find... I understand the uh, caution. Yes, the caution yeah. is there. So people like to think that ah, I'm being harassed, I'm being made not to get my passport in good time. Why is it that it's so difficult to get a lost passport? It's for the good of everybody in the system involved. Somebody will take your passport now, go and present, steal your identity and present himself as something else. Maybe clean your account, maybe uh, let's say commit a very serious crime Offense. and then it leave your passport leave, yes, there. It, leaves to you, it leads back to you. So you find out that uh, people sometimes deliberately too, very few instances, deliberately too, yet uh, say ensure their passports get lost, deliberately. Really? Yes, exactly, because they want to pass for something else that they are not. Okay, I'm going to need you to explain that because yeah, that's a okay. bit confusing. Let's say you you will say, okay, I say present your passport to Chi. Yeah. Tochi will say, ah, I lost my passport. In that particular passport, you were born in 1987. Okay. Now you want to pass something else that 1987 will not pay you. Go ahead, sir. Will not pay you. Yeah. So you say, okay, ah, I was born in 1994. But you, you said my passport was lost. But with the e-passports now, we can recall all those information. And the, the, you have very small leeway to beat the system. So you find out there are a lot of technical issues involved in loss of passports that people should be aware of. It is for the good of everybody, not just... Uh, it's good. Uh, we make it convenient for everybody not to be embarrassed by the lead at... Uh, Places to get your passport done, but it is for the good of everybody that due diligence the, and due checks yeah. are made for you. Security concerns yes, and all caution. Not, exactly. Because that's um, the um, passports, the missing passport issue is just like a question that um, Ken is asking. Mm. He says, 
regaining a missing passport is usually that the government makes it very expensive. But you sound as if you, when you're getting back the passport, it is free. But no. he says getting a missing passport no. or lost passport no. is yeah. usually very expensive. There are additional uh, costs involved in uh, issuing... Different from the yes, price for getting the, the passport. The, the real passport. Okay. Because procedures in making sure your data is recovered and checked and what, they take money to be. Okay. So there are additional costs in court if you are applying for lost passports. So you've lost your passport, you pay 77,000 naira, but it's much more than that. You may pay a little bit more than that. Right. So, yeah. so it's, it's, um, it's legal that it's actually more expensive than... No, no. There are official okay. prices that you pay and you get a receipt for. Official prices. Okay. So before we continue that conversation, um, I'm very sure that most people, just like how when they get their passports, it's for the reason of leaving the country. It's to exit the country, right? But do you really know how to exit the country, right? This, that, this next feature will teach you how to exit the country, right? Watch this. Whether it is a study, a vacation, or a job offer, going somewhere new and foreign is so exciting as a first-timer. It can be overwhelming and confusing, but it must be done right and legally. Get your passport. This is what validates your citizenship of a said country. It comes in 32 and 64 pages. Requirements for a passport include the local government's letter of identification, birth certificate or age declaration, a guarantor's form sworn to before a magistrate, parents' letter of consent for minors under 16 years and marriage certificate where applicable. Apply for a visa. A visa is a documented permit to enter a country legally it could be for study, visit, medical, tourism, and even job offers. Depending on your destination and purpose, you can be called for an interview at the embassy within two weeks. You should know that requirements vary from country to country. Depending on your destination, some visa applications will require your bank statements or even medicals. Note that this interview might not guarantee approval especially when certain conditions are not met. You should know that visa fees are non-refundable. Certain routine health checks, tests and vaccinations are necessary. Some countries require your yellow card, which is a certificate of vaccination showing that a traveler has been immunized against yellow fever. For many countries, a COVID-19 vaccination evidence or a PCR negative test is required. Travel tickets To have a better planned and convenient trip for first-time travelers, it is advised to have a travel agent help with your booking and other logistics. It is important to go online to check for prohibited travel items, depending on the country you are traveling to. Also, ensure you get basic knowledge about the city like weather, currency conversion, language, transportation, and so on. These are just the basic information you should arm yourself with if you plan to make that trip abroad. Also, ensure you understand and adhere to the country's rules and regulations to avoid stories that touch. This is still the Medley Show, and my name is Tochi. I still have the former Controller General of Immigration, David Paradong, in the studio, and we have been talking passport process. So, of course, if you didn't know how to leave the country rightly, now that now you know, because that feature must have given you some insight. So, um, we're going to take some questions. I mean, our lines are buzzing with lots and lots of questions from people, and uh, of course, you're going to help to do justice to those questions. I'm going to start with this question. Um, he didn't quite put his name, he or she, but the question is what is the difference between ECOWAS passport and international passport? Thank you very much. The ECOWAS passport. Uh, is the one issued for you to travel within the ECOWAS subregion, a free mm. movement zone, that you don't require a visa 
in that passport okay. to travel to Ghana, right. to Cote d'Ivoire, yes. to Freetown, to Gambia, to Liberia, wherever in the South uh, region. You don't require that one to go. So for you can ECOWAS take ECOWAS nations. For, yes, for ECOWAS. Right. That will reduce the volume of people that say, I want passport, I want passport. When you are just supposed to go to within the sub-region, you can right. take the ECOWAS travel certificate. They are issued even up to local governments. You okay. can get it out there and move with it. The passport itself, that's what Nigerians call international, international passport, passport, is for international travel. Although you are, you are going to Cotonou, it's, it's an, an international, international travel. <laughs> but uh, you take advantage of the ECOWAS Treaty that okay. allows for free movement and you use the... But when you are traveling to a country that you require a visa, that's when you actually need the international passport to use it. Okay. So you can reduce a lot of, that's the difference between the two of them. Right. There's another question. He's asking, he or she's asking, how can I change um, the date of birth of my passport without stress? Those are the issues that, uh, technical issues that I told you earlier on that. You have to get documentation for change. Right. We have a major problem in Nigeria. We don't change dates of birth as... Uh, your date of birth should, should be always some, be your yeah, date of birth. It's not that, except there's a mistake from somewhere. I don't say that there are no mistakes. In those days, some of us that are in uh, maybe the generation before yeah. your generation now, maybe there were people that were not literate enough to record your date of birth. Maybe they put August for you instead of... I mean, maybe if an agent helped you to fill your application. That could also cause yes, an issue. Yes, they would have. And, uh, but it, you have the responsibility when they ask you to check your data. And you can pinpoint it at that point. And look, you are giving me a different date of birth. Okay. So you change. So, But change of dates of birth is a technical issue that has to go to the real back end and change. And does the process take so long? Yes, it takes a long okay. while. It doesn't start and end with the immigration service. It starts okay. and ends with the technical service providers. Right. And it, has, it means an amendment or addition of the central database. Right. In the central database. So it's something that you don't just walk and get it done. So you find out that it takes time. Whoever asks that question, please know that <laughs> you have to be patient for the process. You may have paid, you may have gone to submit your yeah. police report, you have called a affidavit and all those things, but it has to go through the bank and get it done properly. Okay. So I have another question. He's saying, he or she's saying, can pilgrimage passport be used for other international trips? The Is there a different passport for pilgrimage trips? There used to be pilgrimage passports okay. in those days, but no more. So same there, passports there used to be for a brown passport for pilgrimage that people use to travel to pilgrimage, but now you have to use an international passport. The government of Saudi Arabia has refused accepting such. Okay. So everybody has to go with uh, an international passport. To Saudi How Arabia. long ago was that faced out? Mm, I don't think it's up to four years. So someone who still has a pilgrimage passport that has not expired. Can the person use it for other trips, or the person has to now go and get no, a proper international passport? No, let him just put it in passport. his own uh, museum. <laughs> it's archive. <laughs> oh it's archive. It will, uh, he will come and tell his children one day that, look, these are the kind of passports we used to travel with in Nigeria. We had pilgrimage passports. We had this. You can use that for, for that. Okay, archive. so quickly, I'm just going to take one more question, yeah? Oh, and minute. just one more quickly. We're running out of time. So yeah. this person says, um, capturing in Lagos offices takes... Um, four weeks after registration and production, they said, takes five months. That the response given to us is lack of passport booklets. How do we um, solve this problem of lack of passport booklets? Uh, let me quickly say that... Uh, yeah, because I've heard that issue no, of No, we, we did. We yeah. handled this one before with you a little bit earlier, saying that uh, the dates for passport capturing have gradually been cut down. Okay. gradually and i gave you i said not more than 10 days anymore maybe he did this long ago gradually gradually actually in real fact the dates are coming down i can give you clearly some people used to ah mr paran can you help me they gave me uh applied in uh in july they are giving me november you don't hear that anymore okay but this is gradually coming down so you find out that gradually you but of course the issue of passport booklets is something that I expect the new financial system will address. Okay. You require, as I told you, the, the advancement in technology 
on the paperwork requires that most of the parts to these passports are paid in international currencies. Okay. And in fact, the procedure for getting it is a little bit difficult, and uh, the prices keep variating. So maybe you have paid uh, $10,000 or whatever. They used to produce maybe 5,000 booklets. You find out that uh, 10,000 now can only produce 1,000. Yeah. So you find, then you find there will be uh, shortages. But now the system has so graduated that anybody who wants, you don't have to apply to the processes. They've almost. tried to make it a lot easier. And, and the government has tried to make you access the, access, the accessing of uh, foreign currency on demand for valuable purposes, for useful purposes. You can get it done quickly. So the issue of passport booklets will not be, be an issue, an issue anymore. anymore. Okay. Yeah. With time now, you find out that if you pay your dollar, give, give your money, get your passports, give your money, get your passport. And right people have paid very good amounts of money that can okay. uh, fund. Okay, thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that that won't be an issue anymore. I'm sure so many other people are glad to hear that. And um, we've been talking to David Paradang, the retired controller of the Nigerian Immigration Service. I mean, we have a lot of questions, but maybe we'll find another time to talk about that. Thank you so much for coming today. That's where we're going to um, end the conversation for today. Thank you, so Tochi, for having me. Thank you, sir. It's been an interesting time on The Medley Show today. I'm sure you've learned so many things from the features and, of course, from Mr. David Paradang. And that is where we draw the curtains on the show today. But we will be leaving you with this song called Area by Sound Soul Time. I mean, we're using that to pay our tributes to him. We lost him about a few years ago on, in the month of July. And so this song called Area has to do with... Um, leaving the country, and it does remind us that regardless of where you go to, there is nowhere like home. My name is Tochi, and I will be here next week. See you. Bye bye. Oh, stay, see, love. You don't pick up my calls no more. Please remember me. Oh, don't let this love go. I should have been there. No matter where you go, no forget area. Oh. Area. Oh. How I wish, baby, that I could be there wherever you are. You are so far away. Hey. Dad, don't take the shine from your star. Cause what you are is my shine. She never do somebody, but all you ain't go. Make it a travel go Chicago. Remember now I'm the selling car. So you go go America. And all these people, we be the race, you did it day. First me I first you promise you no go fashy them. Say every month you go touch them. And Hillary, where you promise to marry? She the way she the tarry. What did she see for inside of fashion? No, you both from another nation. You smuggle my go get though. Oh, you my wife don't know. Next thing you know, she don't go report you.